Hey everyone, so here's the question in front of us and uh, I'm going to use this question to help you understand the concept of AND and ORD, basically uh, when to multiply events and when, when to add them. But before starting off, let me tell you that um, there are two ways to solve this question and one of them is like a, re a really, really easy way to do it. But then I'm going to show you the first method which is slightly long but that is going to really help you understand uh, uh, when to add and when to multiply events, okay? Uh, so if you want, you can pause the video, try the question once and then resume again uh, to see how to solve this question, okay? So in this question, uh, it's given that we have uh, 10 books. So let me write that down, 10 books, okay? And out of these 10 books, uh, three books are on physics and uh, seven of them are on chemistry, okay? Now, uh, in this question, uh, it's asked, uh, in how many ways can Harry select five books? So our requirement is total five books, okay? And uh, the constraint that is given here is that I need to select five books such that I select at least, so the condition is at least one book on both physics and chemistry, okay? So uh, I'm choosing five, but I need to ensure that I have one book each of physics and chemistry, minimum, okay? Now, uh, whenever you have a question like this where, uh, where the at least uh, at most condition is given, it is best that you uh, write down events first, okay? So when I'm choosing five books, what are the different ways of choosing five books? Let me write down physics and chemistry separately, okay? And let me write total five here. The sum should be five. Or uh, let me write the number of ways of arranging it. So basically what I'm trying to say is, let's write down all the different ways in which we can get five books. So one way is that I take one physics and four, uh, one physics and four chemistry book, right? That's one way. So there will be total five books. The other way is that I took, uh, choose two physics and three chemistry, right? Other way could be that I choose three physics and two chemistry. Okay, can I choose four physics book? No, I cannot. Why? Because I have only three physics book with me, right? So the number of ways of in which I can choose the physics or chemistry book, keeping the constraint in mind are these three. Okay, now there are, this is where you need to understand that so, so far I'm very sure that most of you will be able to uh, infer till this place. But after that only the main confusion starts where uh, you might have to decide when, uh, what to add and what to multiply. Okay, now let me write down first in how many the ways in which we can select it. Okay, so we have to select one book out of three physics book. I can write it as 3C1. Okay, if I have to choose four chemistry out of seven, I'll write it as 7C4. Okay, similarly, and I'm not writing anything here. I'm not multiplying or adding, doing anything. I'm just leaving it as is for now. Okay, we'll come back to it. I can choose two physics book in 3C2 ways and I can choose three chemistry book out of seven in seven C three ways. Similarly, I can choose three physics book out of three in three C three ways and this I can choose in seven C two ways. Okay. Now, this is where you, some of you get confused and uh, wonder whether I should uh, put an addition sign here or multiplication sign here. Okay. Now, the best way to understand what you need to do is to ask yourself, what kind of an event is it? Okay. Ask yourself, you need five books, right? So, do you need both physics and chemistry book together to make five books. Okay, understand, I'm emphasizing on this fact. I need physics and chemistry books, right? I need both of them to make total, to get uh, uh, total five books, right? And since I need both physics and chemistry and both these events of selecting physics and chemistry should happen simultaneously, right? I need to take both of them and since it is combined with the word and, that is why you need to put a multiplication sign here. Okay, so whenever you have a scenario like this, ask yourself this question and if, if you're coming up with the word and, you should be able to understand that you need to multiply. And the easy way to understand is whether you need both of them together or not. You need both of them. You need physics and chemistry because there's also a condition of at least here. Since you need both of them to make five, that is why the multiplication sign is needed and that is why you'll put multiplication sign here. Okay, now, uh, 3C1 is 3. As far as 7C, 7C4 is concerned, 7C4 can be written as 7 factorial by 4 factorial into 3 factorial. And you can write it as 7, 6, 5 
into 4 factorial by 4 factorial into 6 and this will give you 35. Okay, so this turns out to be 105. 3C2 is also 3 and 7C3, 7C4 are same. So here also you'll get 105. Again, I'm not uh, really doing the calculation because the idea here is to teach you AND and OR and not the calculation of P and C. 3C3 is 1 and uh, 7C2 can be written as 7 into 6 by 2 which is 21. Okay, so uh, total cases that you'll get here is 2, uh, 231. Okay, now this is also another place where a lot of people get confused. Uh, thankfully, there's no option here uh, where you have to wonder whether you need to do 105 uh, plus 105 plus 21 or do you need to do 105 times 105 times 21. Okay, so there's no option like this. Obviously, you may be able to make, come to the inference that you need to add it. But let's just say you have an option like this also, 105 times 105 times 121. What will you do then? This is another place where you get confused, right? Now, think about it. Whenever you again uh, ask yourself, can I have uh, can I have an event where I choose one physics for chemistry and simultaneously understand this simultaneously and at the same time two physics and three chemistry book? It cannot happen. Both these events cannot happen simultaneously, right? When you're choosing books, think about it. Imagine if you're choosing, you'll either take one physics for chemistry or you'll be taking two physics, three chemistry, right? You cannot make make sure that both these events happen together or you will end up choosing three physics and uh, two chemistry. So these events are happening independently. They cannot happen simultaneously. So once you make, make this inference, okay, I cannot have both these events simultaneously. That means I need to add them. Okay, had there been a scenario that both of them could have taken place together, then only you would have said, okay, I need to multiply. So I hope now it's, it's, it's clear when you need to multiply, when you need to add, when both events need to be done together and simultaneously, then you need to put a multiplication sign. When there are two events which cannot, uh, which cannot happen simultaneously, like in this case, you need to add them up. Okay. So this is how you need to come to the inference. So this is one way of solving the question, okay, of coming to the answer. Now, there's another way to solve this question. So uh, let me uh, tell you how to do that. Now, another way to solve this question is to think in this way. Okay, you have three physics and seven chemistry book, okay, total 10 books. And you need at least one of each type. That's the constraint. Okay, sometimes instead of writing down all the favorable cases that we did in the previous uh, in the previous method, the other and the quick way would be to just find out all the ways of selecting it. Okay, so out of 10 book, just simply write 10 C5, select all the books that are possible. Okay, and from that, eliminate those cases which you don't want. So what is one possible case? One possible scenario which you don't want is when you have five, when you choose all five chemistry book and zero physics book, right? This is one case which you don't want to happen, right? So simply eliminate those cases. Now, if you choose five phys uh, chemistry book out of seven, in how many ways can you do that? You can do that in seven C, five ways. So this is one case which you don't want. So let's remove it because in this case you don't have zero physics you have zero physics but you want one physics at least okay now ask yourself is this case possible which you don't want zero chemistry and five physics because these are the only two cases which you don't want right but is this even possible this is not possible right because you don't have five physics book so this case will never occur so when you're saying i'm choosing our five books out of 10 books this is the only scenario which you don't want Okay, so, so so all you need to do is 10C5, find all the ways and remove the favorable, unfavorable case that you don't want. And as you can see, instead of writing three different cases, I'm just removing one of them. So whenever you have a number of cases, uh, favorable cases and very few unfavorable cases, it makes sense to find out the unfavorable one first and remove them um, and get the answer. Okay, so if I simplify this, I'll get 10C5 as 10 factorial by 5 factorial times 5 factorial minus 7 factorial by 5 factorial times 2 factorial. Once again, you can simplify this 5 factorial times 5 factorial by writing it as 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 and this would be 5 factorial by 5 factorial times. You can, if you know the value of 5 factorial, you can write it as 120 directly. Okay, and now you need to do your calculation. Uh, just cancel this out. You'll get 9 into 4, 36, 
times 7 okay and this would give you 252 right yes 252 and as far as this calculation is concerned this is nothing but uh, 7 fact 7 into 6 times 5 factorial by 5 factorial times 2 and that would give you 21 and which again gives you the same answer okay so I hope it's clear how you can use this method also to solve the question